Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now today is Monday and this is a new week and I'm trusting the Spirit of God that He will meet you exactly where you are right now and watching or listening to me right now. And I pray that the Spirit of God will take over your life and produce in you everything that will glorify God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I know we're going to have a great week. And as you listen to the word of God, open your heart and let God minister truth in Jesus' name. Before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call forth our daily bread, just like the Lord instructed us to do. So are you ready? I want you to release your faith right now. Hey, it doesn't matter the time of the day you can still receive your daily bread right now. Praise God. Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. As simple as that sounds, it's powerful. Because you know what? God hears you when you pray. And you remember what Jesus said, if you pray according to my will, see, John actually said that if you pray according to his will, he hears us. Now, how else do you want to tell that this is God's will, being that Jesus himself said we should make this demand when he was teaching the disciples to pray? He says, ask Give us this day our daily bread. Now, Jesus speaks from the place of eternity. I need you to understand. His words are not words that would change by tomorrow. His words will not carry a different meaning by tomorrow. Everything he said, he spoke in truth. And that's why we have to really, really be careful when we deal with the things Jesus taught. His word will not change. It's our understanding that will change. So you see, sometimes, you know, you, you find this a lot amongst believers, especially those who are given to the teaching of God's word. Now, no man is infallible. I want you to take that from me. The reason is this, we all see in parts. Now, when I say we see in parts, it also means what I may have seen five years ago, looking at it again today, I may see differently. So what I saw five years ago was in part of even that subject. And what I'm even seeing now is in part of that same subject. So, but when Jesus says something, we must recognize that Everything he said was not just to the disciples he was speaking to. He is speaking to everyone who will come to the knowledge of that truth. It doesn't matter when they come to the knowledge of that truth. His word will still remain exactly the way he said it. Praise God. He is not going to prove himself to be true. Life will prove him to be true. That's the beauty about Jesus. That's why I always tell believers, take the words of Jesus so important. Listen, if you want to carry the Bible and just study those words written in red, study them until you understand the thinking of Jesus. Yeah, because you see, his words reveal his mind. Now, people will be quiet until they open their mouth and start talking. You can now begin to tell what's on their mind. Have you been in a situation you thought someone has been your friend for many years? It's been, you guys have had good times until maybe a challenging situation came up. And this same person starts saying some words that you're like, really? 
You mean you've got these things inside of you? Praise God. Now, as long as the person was quiet, you didn't know that. But when they began to speak, they began to show their mind. See that now? Because that's the truth about life. So when you look at what someone is saying, you can tell what's on their mind. Telling what's on their mind tells how they think. So when we study the words of Jesus, we'll begin to understand how Jesus thought when he walked through this world. And it's the same way he thinks today. And I always tell people this. If you want to really understand the words of Jesus, concentrate on the book of John. Now he said not that he only spoke in John. The reason I'm saying concentrate on the book of John is this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospel uh, part of the Bible, were written by two men who walked directly with Jesus. That's Matthew and John. Luke and Mark were not disciples, direct disciples of Jesus. We read about Mark when um, he got born again after the resurrection of Jesus. Now, Mark was Barnabas. You remember Barnabas, Barnabas who went to fish out um, Paul. Now, Mark was Barnabas' disciple, and later he joined the ministry of Barnabas and Saul and Paul, you know. And then, you know, they, they had this um, argument one time because Mark wouldn't stay. You know, when, when Mark is that kind of brother that when things get difficult, he wants to run away for comfort. <laughs> Mark will not go for evangelism in some villages. He's not going to go there. He loves to go for evangelism. He loves to follow them to preach the gospel. But when he sees tough situations, Mark will tell you, guys, I'll see you when you guys come back to the city. <laughs> that's, that's like Mark. Now, so Paul didn't like that because, I mean, if you're with us, you have to be with us all the way. And so, he had this issue. But, but Barnabas, being the kind of person that he was. Now, you know, sometimes we, we, we don't think these things. But you forget that these men were men of like passion like we are. <laughs> God. So the thing that made them have that um, argument then is still what's making us have arguments today. Little things of the flesh. Now, we try to make them things of the spirit somehow see because paul said look because they, they were about to set out on the second missionary journey and and mark wanted to come and paul says no mark you are not coming with us because you are not a trustworthy fellow when things get difficult you will run away and and, and mark said no i really want to come now barnabas has the heart of uh, he had a good heart See that now? Now you remember there's a description they gave about Barnabas when, when they sent him to go follow up the disciples in the book of Acts. They said he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost. And now, now, let me read, look for that scripture for you. Because it's important you see it. Acts chapter 11 and verse 24. Acts 11, 24. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to start reading from verse 22. Verse 22. Now, listen to this. It says, then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. News of what things? All the people that are getting saved, all of them, all, you know. Now you, you, you start reading. Um, let me read from verse 19 so you understand the background story. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose after Stephen traveled, after Stephen, that's after the death of Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to 
no one but the Jews only. So when the disciples scattered, they began to look for Jewish people and they were preaching the gospel to them. Now, but some of them were men, that's verse 20 now, but some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was upon them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Can you see this now? So they were preaching to different people. And some of them were bold enough to go beyond the Jewish people and began to minister to those that were referred to as the Hellenists. Now, in verse 22, he says, then, good, then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. Watch this now. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. For he, Barnabas, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. These were the qualities of Barnabas. He was a good man. He was full of the Holy Ghost and faith. So, now, he wanted uh, John Mark, the writer of the book of Mark. Now, so at this time, I don't think he even dreamt he was going to write anything. <laughs> Praise God, when this argument ensued. Now, so he, he was, he wanted to go with them. Paul said, no, you can't come with them. You have disappointed us before. You know, Paul is a no-nonsense person. <laughs> but you see, Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. So Barnabas, now, John Mark was Barnabas' soul. And he wanted him to get all the experience that was needed in ministry. He wanted him. He believed in him. Remember, he was a man of faith. Men of faith are always, they always see the best in everybody. They always believe, they always believe in hope, even though the situation looks hopeless. So he insisted, no, we can't drop him because dropping John Mark to Barnabas will mean every work that is to be done in this guy it means turning our backs on him. No, Paul, um, Barnabas said, no, I would rather he goes with us. Paul said, no, he can't come with us. Barnabas said, no, he has to go with us. And Paul said, well, if you insist, then I don't think I can join you. And then it became a very heated argument. So they decided instead of us going into strife, Let's separate. You see that now? Now God called them together and said, let's separate. And so Barnabas took John Mark and they went to a separate region. And Paul picked Silas or Luke or someone else. And they traveled to a different distance. Now there are people who assumed that after that separation, Barnabas' ministry Die. Now, that's not true, praise God. Now, th that's how people conclude on things without understanding. No, Barnabas' ministry didn't die. It flourished. And so why didn't we hear about him? Because the book of Acts that was written was written by someone who was with Paul. See that now? Now, he was not everywhere writing what everybody is writing it's because he was with paul now look see that now it takes us back to the writer of luke luke was a disciple that got born again under paul's ministry see that so when when that whole this the, when that whole um, separation happened now luke walked with paul so he was following him so everything luke wrote was what he saw while following Paul, and then some of the news that filtered in from other disciples. Okay, why didn't now Luke write about the, the exploits Barnabas was doing? Now, when we see them in heaven, we we'll ask them, praise God. But I'm just trying to get you to understand the background. Now, the fact that John grew to that point 
where he wrote the epistle of Mark. No, no. Um, Mark now, John Mark. He grew to that point where he wrote his epistle and it was accepted. That should let you know that he had grown from where they left, where Paul left him. Now, who do you think was responsible for that? Barnabas. You see that? Now, you remember Barnabas was the one that picked Paul when, when the believers were in doubt concerning Paul. It was Barnabas that went to pick him up and said, no, follow me, come. He took him to the elders. He took him to the other disciples and said, no, this guy has truly believed. Now, that's the heart of Barnabas. Praise God. Now, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but understand, I'm trying to let you know that the epistles were written by men, right? And then out of these four epistles, two were written by disciples who walked with Jesus. Two were written by disciples who got saved long after Jesus. So they were hearing what they heard from other people. But Matthew and John were first-hand witnesses of the things they wrote about. Now, but why do I say John's writing is more important if you want to understand the words of Jesus? I'll tell you why. Now, when, Luke, when Matthew was writing, Matthew was more concerned about the events that took place around Jesus. That was what Matthew was concerned about. Now, John was concerned about the person of Jesus. So, John was careful to write everything Jesus said. So, John will, when John is writing about something that happened, his interest, now that's the thing, when we write, when we preach, we all have our area of focus. If I want to preach a message, there is, a, there is something I want to communicate in that message. Sometimes, even while you're praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what should I preach to this congregation? And then the Lord will just give you a phrase. Now, that phrase is what he wants you to communicate. Now, even if you don't prepare for that meeting, you know, like carrying your Bible to study, the moment you start preaching, words will begin to come even though it was a phrase God gave to you. Are you following me now? Words will begin to come. Why are those words coming? They are coming to support that phrase. Now, if you concern yourself for, on every other thing and forget to highlight that phrase that God gave to you, you will, you will have failed to deliver the message that God gave to you. So John was concerned about delivering the words that Jesus spoke, communicating to us the truth and reason behind that communication. So John, his, his message was to highlight the point that was in the heart of Jesus. This is why I tell people, so you know, we're still talking about Jesus being the light, the true light. So this is so important. That's why I tell you, study the book of John to give you a mindset about the personality and the teachings of Jesus. Jesus. Our time is up for today. Praise God. Listen, I'm telling you, we're going to have a great week. So I need to set this foundation right for this week. God bless you. And I pray that you will enter into rest this week. I pray that the true light will shine in your heart and you will enter into your rest this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.